Affinity Photo version 2 has got a great new mesh warp feature that's live with text as well as shapes. So you can just go here, layer, and down to new live filter layer, and distort, and mesh warp. And you can distort your heart's content. However, there's another way of doing this if you've got Affinity Designer. So I've got this text selected. I can go to File, and I can go down to Edit in Designer. So Edit in Designer will put you now in Designer. And of course, you've got access to loads of other features, maybe the Appearance Panel, so you can add additional strokes and fills to it. Also, you can apply contours and so on. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use this feature. Over in the Layers Panel, just go down here. Fourth item, there's a Mesh Warp. And it's still Vector. Vector here. So just click here, and you can see some presets. Now you can go down here, you've got mesh, quad, perspective, got a load of different presets, very useful. And you can go down to twist. So twist is a great one, and you can see it will create a twist there. You've got here, you've got all the presets again in the control bar, and also you've got value, so you can modify that. So let's just move that around, tweak that. But what you can do once you've done that, you've distorted this design, you can now say, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go back into photo. So I'm just going to go to File and Edit in Photo. It does require, of course, you need in Designer and Photo, and obviously if probably Publisher as well, if you're going to do work with that. So Edit in Photo, and now back in there. And what you can do, you can resize, you can do various other things, but you'll notice in the Layers panel, you've got this option here, Warp Group. It's added this warp, and you can click that out, and you can still go to this text, and you can still then modify that. So you can see as you drag that out, resize it, rotate it. And I think that's actually nicer than the layer feature, personally. So you can see as you rotate that, really, really nice way of modifying the text. And again, resize. And also, you can add additional items to that. So you decide, you know what? I want maybe a square added into that. Let's just add a square, a little color there. And you can see that gets distorted as well. And you can move that around, and that warps between that as well. So you can create some interesting designs using that. I'm just going to remove that, but I just wanted to point out you can modify that warp group. But also, what you can do is if you go here over to the node tool, and I have to quickly find the node tool. Here it is beneath the pen tool, and you've got node tool. So select the node tool. With the node tool selected, you can modify the points of the warp group. You have to select the warp group here. So this entry, not that, but go here, warp group. And as soon as you do that, generally just go there on that item there. Sometimes it seems to work fine, but sometimes I, you do have fine have to select that. But you notice also up in here in the top corner, you've suddenly got access to the warp and twist value. You've still got all the presets, the vector presets. So you can turn around and say, oh, I want fisheye. Run through bend. So you can create some interesting designs using that as well. Arc horizontal. And you can distort these. Also, you can change the value. So you can just change that, move that around, really alter it in all kinds of different ways. It's still live, still just part of group, but it's not like in a traditional thing with a live layer above this. This is using a slightly different approach. Obviously, the results are much the same. It's distorting the text. You can also simply still select text, and you can still go here to the move tool and resize it. And also, if you want to, go down here to the artistic text tool and decide, you know what, I don't want that text. I might want, say, two, three, four, whatever. So you can still change it. You can still modify the text. Again, go back here, select this, and you can move it around, reposition it. Also, again, go to the no tool. Let's go there again, no tool there, and you can still continue to modify it. Now, as soon as you go to these points, and if I just change it slightly, if I modify this point, so if I just click there and tweak it, you'll lose access to that 12 value arc. But you've still got this quad, you can run through those, just try out different ones. And again, you can modify those, and you can see and distort it that way. And at any point, you can convert to curves. So if you want to get rid of that warp, simply convert to curves. So click there, and that just goes back to a traditional group, group, and even the text is broken apart. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to undo that 
to put it back again to live text, which you can still continue to modify. So that, that, and then if you say, I want to change it a bit more, you can always at any point go file and edit in designer and go back and tweak it in other ways. But it's a really great way. And the key tool for this, no tool. As long as you're selecting that, the warp, you can modify it and tweak it and change it. And as with the rest of the mesh tools, just double click and add additional mesh points like that. So if you've got a grid, say, you can go to view, you've got all the various grids and access, you can set up a grid, line everything with that as well, if you want to do that. And you can continue to modify things, just tweak it, change it, and distort the text, even in loads of different ways. And again, once you're happy with that, just going to go over here to the Andrew, and you can always convert that to standard curves if you want as well. If you've got any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Thank you much.